Good morning, everybody. I will officially call our June 16th, 2022, 8 a.m. public safety meeting to order. Uh, do I have, oh, I have Mike Berry. Mike, considering your reappointment, why don't you go ahead and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance this morning, my friend, if you don't mind. I will not mind at all. Excellent. Thank you. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mike, I appreciate it. Excellent work as always. Um, first and foremost, uh, public audience, Tom, Maria, did we have anybody register for the, the meeting this morning? We do not have anybody regi uh, registered to speak live this morning. Okay. Um, you all should have received an email, I believe last night from Maria with uh, email correspondence that we received um, per our rules and per the board of selectment rules, those written comments are dispersed to all members. Um, please do read them because it's important that we read all comments from, from the public. Um, if you have questions, if you do want to address it, we can certainly talk about it at the applicable line item. Um, but as is our practice at the, both the board of selectmen and here, um, uh, we give folks an opportunity to come and, and speak. And then again, all members would have the opportunity to go ahead and read those written or email comments. So, and I encourage folks, if they do want to come, um, again, please email the town manager. Uh, it's on all agenda items and it is the same practice as the Board of Selectmen. Anyone and everyone is more than willing to speak uh, or more than able to speak at our public safety meetings. And in fact, we do encourage it. I'm sure that many of you would love to hear more from the public, uh, both good and challenging feedback. Um, you all work really hard. And again, it's important that we, we get uh, we get that information in a timely manner from from our from our uh, community. So, with that, we will continue to move on to the minutes. Uh, we have the outstandingly done March seventeenth, two thousand twenty-two minutes. Are there any questions, objections, changes? All right, hearing none. Those meetings, will, uh, those minutes will stand. And our good friend Jennifer Curtanis is here. Jennifer. Ah, good morning, everyone. Morning. Um, usually Melissa's joining you, but she's on a well-deserved vacation, although she was in Yellowstone National Park during the floods, but oh, she no. is safe. Okay. Um, so um, good to see everybody. COVID's not done with us, but certainly we are uh, glad to report that we're in about the six week of declining numbers. Um, our focus has been more on working with um, schools and businesses to reduce the potential for outbreaks or clusters of disease. Um, I just want to go on record. I know Neil is on the phone, but our school systems have just been phenomenal. I know they're all counting down the days to some well-deserved break and summer vacation, but uh, we could not have done a lot of the work that we did in the school systems uh, without all of the support of our school nurses and the school administration. So thank you to all of them. We are not issuing um, our weekly emails with data updates unless there is some compelling story to tell. However, we are updating all of the data weekly on our website. So if folks are interested in how data is trending, that is where you can find it. Um, we are gearing up to do booster shots again um, in preparation for the fall where we anticipate that there will be increased interest in booster shots. And we're gonna be doing that at a fixed location at our offices in Canton. We will be promoting those through all sorts of channels, including the town, our senior centers, school systems, et cetera. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and I think that's pretty much it on COVID. Um, as you all know, in the news, we are facing another um, disease that is monkeypox. Um, we're watching that closely. Our role as the health department will be to monitor people who were potentially exposed or um, travelers returning from areas where they were potentially at high risk of exposure. At this point in time, it really uh, presents minimal or no risk to the general public unless you fall into some specific categories. 
Um, I believe Connecticut is currently tracking at least one traveler. Um, to the best of my knowledge, as of this morning, we have no confirmed cases in the state of Connecticut and about 70 cases in uh, the United States. So again, something that we're monitoring and prepared for should we need to step in and do some monitoring. Um, we are really happy to say that we here are transitioning back to some other more normal types of public health activities, including, as Maria knows, um, work on our community health assessment. Um, we hope to have a final version of that sometime in early fall, and that's a document that really speaks to um, the health status of our communities, what are the most significant causes of premature morbidity and mortality so that we can then engage in prevention strategies. Um, so more to come on that over time. But again, that's an update from us. Jennifer, that's good news. And, and again, I know you can't necessarily read the crystal ball of the CDC, but when you talk about boosters, are you talking about those that haven't yet boosted or is there a potential for a, a generic fourth round I think, I think it's the, an evolving story. Um, I think there are plenty of folks that are still going to be looking for their second booster. Okay. Um, uh, one other thing I want to mention is we have done um, with the anticipation very soon, like within days of approval of the vaccine for the six month to five year olds. We have touched base with all of our uh, pediatric practices throughout the 10 towns. And the majority of those pediatric practices will be offering um, vaccine to that age group, which is really great news for us because, as you can imagine, um, that's a little more challenging audience. We did wonderfully with the five and ups, but parents typically are much more comfortable getting that done through pediatric practices. So um, we're glad to see that most of our pediatric practices are going to be well positioned to do that. That is excellent news. Having a two-year-old as of Friday, it would. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that announcement. So, excellent. Okay. Uh, any other questions for Jennifer? All right. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. And we will continue. Maria, town manager's office, and specifically uh, the reappointment of Michael Barry. Hey, thank you. Thanks, Sean. And good morning, everyone. Um, I'm very pleased to announce on uh, Monday evening, the Board of Selectmen supported my recommendation to reappoint Mike as our Emergency Management Director for the next two years. So congratulations to Mike. Um, you know, I just can't say enough about all of the good work that he's done for our community over the last two years, whether it was supporting our response to the pandemic, and we had a number of major storm events, um, just really outstanding work. And I really appreciate how much care and dedication he has had for our community. And um, we've been in very good hands. He's been a very important member of our team. Um, so again, just really excited to have, have Mike continue on with us. Well, thank you very much for the kind words. Uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, believe me, it's, it's a pleasure working with all of you because uh, you really make my job easy. <laughs> again, I'm just the maestro to the orchestra. And uh, again, I can't say enough about uh, the whole team and, and how well we work together all around. So thanks again. You're welcome. Thank you. Great. You're and then um, I, shot, I just had one uh, quick item. Um, usually I will provide a quick update on um, the pandemic, I think Jennifer did a really nice job. I do just want to uh, make this group aware um, that during the month of May was actually the second um, sort of uh, largest month for uh, positive cases amongst our workforce. So that was, you know, a little bit interesting during that particular wave. And so we you know, had a number of staff members who were out um, for non-emergency matters. You know, things were, you know, at times maybe a bit delayed or we would have to reschedule. So I really have just been raising some awareness about that and really thanking everybody and the community for their patience and understanding. Fortunately, we did not need to shut down any um, non-essential services. We were in that position. But again, you know, maybe for those non emergency kind of non-urgent matters. Um, we might've been a little slower than normal. So I just really wanted to thank everybody for their patience with us last month. Absolutely. And, and appreciate, the, appreciate the resiliency you built in the organization to be able to deal with that because I think that's important. So on a less important front, 16 and a half percent of the board of selectmen currently has COVID, but that has actual no impact on the town. Good news. So <laughs> uh, nothing to worry. All right. Uh, any questions for our town manager? All right, 
the star of the show, Mike Berry. Congratulations again on your reappointment. I, I echo all the, the comments from Maria. And again, uh, yes, this is a phenomenal group to work with. But, uh, you know, as your predecessor did, it, it is an important uh, role to, to, to keep this group uh, together and communicating and focused. And, and I think you do an outstanding job with that. So thank you for all that work and uh, look forward to your update here, sir. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, with uh, Jennifer and the uh, Farmington Valley Health District starting off today, um, I'll just go back and just reiterate a little bit there. Uh, basically, Mercy Management is now moving into the recovery phase of the COVID pandemic. Um, you know, we're getting out of it. Uh, we've gone through the response phase. We did a fantastic job with that, with everybody's cooperation. Uh, we've passed out all of the test kits uh, and masks that we were uh, allotted from the state. So uh, we got those out to the public. Thank you very much to the library for being so accommodating to help us get those out. Uh, so we're, we're in the recovery phase now, but that does not mean that we should not remain vigilant uh, in, in continuing to uh, uh, take precautions, uh, you know, use the sanitizer when necessary, wash your hands, follow all of the things that I know Jennifer has been reiterating a hundred and hundred hundreds of times, and we appreciate that. Uh, but it is, you know, we just, as I say, last month, we just had another outbreak of uh, employees within the town. Uh, it still is out there, even in a, in a non, not as strong form as it was. So uh, keep vigilant and, and work with the people around you to keep vigilant. Uh, keep up those signs. If we have to take those signs down that are around saying, uh, use the sanitizer, using, you know, hand washing, everything else, just to make them fresh in your offices, just go ahead and do that just to, to get people's minds, uh, keep thinking of uh, safety for people all around. Uh, we are going to continue with the incident action plan each week. However, I won't be distributing it to everybody. Basically, the IAP is a, a record for us to have for the state. So when uh, we need to show that we were doing things to justify any of our grants or any of the uh, money that we were spending on it, uh, we have the IAP that goes around that, that was being produced weekly. Uh, I won't bore you because it is basically the same each week now uh, without any major updates. If another IAP comes through with another, another major update, then obviously I will distribute it to the group, uh, but I will be keep producing it and keeping it for the record uh, so we can use it in the future. Um, with the recovery phase, emergency management is starting to work on more outreach and education programs now. Uh, we've started to reach out to the groups that we used to hit on a regular basis to meet up with for emergency preparedness, uh, weather preparedness, home preparedness, uh, and we're starting to have that outreach start again uh, when, you know, when applicable. So if there's any groups uh, that are getting together that would like to have a representative come to their meeting, uh, myself or Jim Traficante would be more than happy to come out and continue with our education and keep going forward with our uh, preparations for the town. We have also started a new Facebook page. Uh, we were dovetailing onto a lot of, uh, of the pages in the town and providing information from emergency management through them, uh, through Jim Traficante's uh, efforts. Uh, we have a Mer Simsbury emergency management page now that if there's any bulletins or any weather updates or anything that's pertinent to the town, we will be pumping information out through that. Uh, and it is controlled by us. Uh, so if there's anything from any of the other agencies in town, anybody from the group here that wants information to go out through that, uh, I'd be more than happy to post it for them and uh, we'll keep that going there. As for the weather, the weather has been very good. Um, we had a, a fairly good spring. Um, there was one time where the river came up and got right to its banks, but didn't come out. Um, so I can say that we've successfully uh, made it past that. But now we are moving into the thunderstorm season and we have a couple of days uh, within the 14 day forecast that we're looking at possibility of some storms. So keep vigilant, uh, keep your eye to the sky. Uh, if you want so there's many apps on your phones that'll alert you uh, when there's things coming up that you should be prepared with. And again, have your kits ready at your house, uh, your home preparedness. Uh, if you have a generator at the house, make sure you check the generators, give them a good run, find out their conditions before you need them. Um, this, uh, this quarter, we, uh, Jim Traficante and myself, met with the new state director of emergency management. Um, people are getting younger and younger each day. Uh, it looks like he just basically graduated high school along with his crew. Um, I'm looking forward to working with them. He comes out of Pennsylvania with a different set of ideas, uh, which I think will be good to get a different perspective coming in for the uh, state of Connecticut. Uh, we're looking forward to working with him. And uh, we're trying to get back to what uh, I guess is going to be called the new normal. Um, obviously, with the, the old normal is going to be gone, but we have to work with the new normal and uh, we'll be working with them on a regular basis. Um, the emergency op operations plan for the town, uh, we're continuing to work on updating that. And once we get it updated, 
Um, we will be meeting with the state and CROG to go through with it to make sure that it meets all their qualifications and all the recommendations, and we'll be going forward with that. Uh, as for grants, uh, we are working on uh, the emergency management performance grant for 21-22 physical year. Uh, all of our past grants are complete, and we're just waiting for the state to distribute the funds to the town, but all the paperwork has been correctly, uh, correctly done, uh, as it is still a learning process for me, and they keep changing the rules. Uh, it's like hitting a moving target. Um, every time I fill it out, they say, nope, we got a new way of doing it. So I'm learning as we go. It's been a great education and I'll uh, keep plugging away at it. And with that, that is my report for this quarter. Mike, I appreciate your upbeat spirit on that. That's uh, you're, you're a good man for that. And uh, I used to resemble, I think, the uh, the younger looking at a high school mark, but uh, the gray hair is, uh, has crept up on me. So, all right. <clears throat> um, any questions for Mike? All right. What excellent job as always. Appreciate it, sir. Thank you. All right, police. Uh, who do we have today? Greg? Yes. Hi. How are you doing? Welcome. Good, how are you today? Nice. Uh, for those of you who haven't met me, uh, Lieutenant Greg Simselski, uh, Deputy Chief and Chief Davis, uh, Deputy Chief Davis and Chief Bolter couldn't make it today, so they asked me to fill in. Um, so this is my first go at this. So Welcome. So for this, um, this past month, we've uh, added uh, our traffic officer back to our, our staffing levels. Uh, we've been without one since 2017 due to staffing shortages, and we were able to put one on um, just this past month. So he's been out there able to hit those hot spots that we get the complaints for, um, bus stops, and, and really paying attention to the complaints that we have in town. Um, he's getting acclimated to the role. Um, making contact with the people making the complaints. So he's out there being visible and hopefully um, it can put um, a little uh, debt in these complaints that we get for the speeding. Um, we've also begun preparing for the Talcott Mountain Music Festival, which is coming up in a, a few short weeks, um, getting our staffing levels ready for that and our directives written for that. So we're looking forward to that. Hopefully it's gonna be a, a good year with the weather. Um, as far as calls for service, uh, we're seeing an increase in um, catalytic uh, converter thefts this year. We've had so far for the year 23, 15 of them, which have come from uh, car dealerships here in town. Um, on the good note, the Larson Eastern Motor Vehicles have been down significantly. We've had 12 this year and stolen motor vehicles have been down significantly. We've had four so far this year. One just occurred um, just a, a few days ago. So those numbers are promising. Um, bear complaints have also started to increase with them coming out of hibernation and, and looking for food. Um, with that said, we are in the final phases of the ACO hiring process. Um, we're looking at two candidates for that, looking at backgrounds on them. And uh, so hopefully shortly that we should have one on board. Um, staffing levels for the police department. We currently have two officers that are out on extended sick leave. Um, we're looking at them returning sometime mid to late summer. and. We began the process taking applications in for the hiring of the two new officers that has been approved for the police department. So once those applications get in and we can get moving on that, we, we should look to have somebody on board for that, that shortly. And I think that's about it that we have for, uh, for the police department this month. All right, so it's a light month, huh? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> No, I appreciate, uh, appreciate the update, Lieutenant. Thank you. Yeah, a lot going on, but uh, I think a lot of good news, right? Staffing up, getting, getting the traffic officer back. That's, I don't know. Yeah, probably getting those staffing levels up. So hopefully we can. <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, I know we have Commissioner Long on. Uh, anyone else or uh, Commissioner Long, do you want to add anything to the police update? Uh, not really. I think the Lieutenant did a, a bang up job for us. And I think they've all agreed that uh, public safety is back on the, uh, as something that's very important to the town. And uh, we are addressing it, and the police department is working hard to, to, uh, to be the number one department in the area. Absolutely. So thank you, Lieutenant. Thank you, John. All right. Appreciate yeah. it, sir. All right. And, yeah, that car dealership, I always thought it was Avon because the name is Avon. But anyway, um, that's, uh, that's a different, uh, different meeting. Okay. Uh, any questions uh, for the Lieutenant or for Commissioner Long? All right. Uh, we will move on uh, to uh, ambulance. Yep. Uh, Karen Stewart, morning. Good morning, everybody, and happy summer. It's finally getting nice weather. I'm I'm a southern girl, so I like the warm weather, not the colds, for sure. 
Um, so if you don't know this already, Simsbury Ambulance is going into their 65th year of providing services to the town of Simsbury. So in light of that celebration, we are going to be offering uh, free friends and family CPR classes to town residents um, that will be posted on our website. And so people can sign up for that. I'm not sure the total count we're gonna do, but a minimum of 65 people would be the most obvious number to pick, but we can do more. So, so keep checking back on uh, Facebook and our website for those classes that we scheduled. And I think it's a great thing to offer to the town. And so the more people that are trained in CPR, and can do the, the first responding if they have a family member or haven't in the grocery store or whatever, wherever you are to be able to uh, assist and help out is always a good thing. Um, we continue to uh, staff our second ambulance as much as we can based on employee availability. Um, we are in the process of hiring uh, more EMTs and paramedics. And we have also increased our volunteers. We have four new members that have joined our service, which is fantastic. Um, the overall town uh, 911 medical calls remain about average, which I would say 240 per month. Obviously there's some fluctuation in that number. Um, we did increase the total hours of our second ambulance during the first quarter. Um, however, due to staffing issues, it kind of dropped in April, but it actually didn't really have any significant effect on call volume, which is again, the irony of our business. And this is what I've tried to explain in the past that since we're so, um, unpredictable that it's amazing how the numbers when you look at it in a black and white way it's not quite as easy as that to and it's hard to explain but we basically had 228 911 calls in April but our 17 our second ambulance was only scheduled for half the time it had been the previous month and had absolutely no effect whatsoever on mutual aid coming in or mutually going out so Again, we're totally committed with the second ambulance, but I just wanna make sure that people understand that the black and white numbers aren't always um, the way to determine how we're gonna do this. So we still continue to do it. So it's gonna be scheduled from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, and obviously we have the uh, primary ambulance, which is scheduled for 24 hours a day, 365 uh, of the year. Um, I guess and the other question that came up, I think in the past was how we calculated the 17 hours. Um, with our scheduling program, I basically look at how many hours uh, 17 could be scheduled for. So for example, for the month of April, if it were scheduled with two people for uh, the, the full 12 hour shift, that would be 720 hours, which would be two people for that month of, for 30 days. Um, so when we schedule the hours, it's based on arrears. It's not based on what we planned on doing. It's based on what actually happened. So to, to be transparent, so we wanted to pre present those hours so that people understand that in April, we only had 264 hours that were actually covered by the 17, the second ambulance, um, which really was only 37% uh, 30 staffed, which is a low number um, con considering the, the previous month we were at 59%. Um, however, there was only a 1% change on what we were able to cover and what mutual aid was able to cover for us. So. I know this is a little scattered I'm, and, I'm, and I'm hoping I'm clear on this stuff. So I want people to understand that um, there is no lack of commitment to doing the second ambulance. We obviously realize that there's a necessity for the town because a call volume is totally increased and will never go down. Um, and with anthology opening up and McLean and building that humongous building, if anybody has seen that back there, that's just kind of scary from my perspective. Um, we're totally committed to keeping this going, but there's a national shortage of people that want to become EMTs and paramedics. So we're addressing that fact. We're trying to increase the um, appeal to come to work for Simsbury. Uh, we're trying to get residents that live in town that want to work for us. Um, we're actually going to explore some other options to get people trained. I know the commercial services have offered a uh, uh, earn or uh, work while you learn kind of programs to see if that's a way to do that as well. So. Um, we are totally, completely active, involving to make sure that the staffing for the town is, is, is adequate and necessary and appropriate. And uh, we have been, 
I, I just can't preface this enough. We're so committed to doing this for the town of Simsbury. So if anybody has questions or concerns, please direct them to me directly. Um, I'm happy to talk to anyone that has questions about what happens in town. If you have a concern about a call, I'm happy to discuss it with you, to talk to the staff if we have corrective actions need to be made or we need to readdress some sort of issue. Um, just I, I can't express <laughs> the commitment that we have to this town and more than that. So I don't want to be overly dramatic, but um, I know everybody received an email um, and we have a um, disgruntled employee who we, and we deny all of his accusations. Um, we have been advised by council to basically say that this is an ongoing issue with him. I'm sorry that people are receiving these emails. Um, the, the union issue, I can honestly say is in process of being decertified. All of our employees have pretty much over 60% have voted to remove the union from our association, which is exactly what I expected to kind of hear from my employees. So it's all very positive. Um, it's been a long couple of years, but we were gonna get through this and Simsbury Ambulance will still be here to serve the town of Simsbury. So that's my soapbox, thank you. <laughs> Uh, Karen, I appreciate that. And I know there's a there's a lot contained in the update and there's a there's a lot of mm -hmm. questions and data. And, and I do appreciate uh, your increased transparency. You know that the 37 percent in April at first blush sounds like, well, wait a minute. Right. But then <clears throat> it sounds like um, there are some incremental steps you and the board are taking to address those staffing issues. So might I suggest, uh, you know, given the volume of interest um, and, uh, and public input around this, perhaps uh, you, myself, Maria, uh, the first select woman, and, and perhaps member or members of your board uh, can get together offline and, and, and come back and have a discussion just, just around that so that we can continue to educate the public in this body, you know, in a manner consistent with, you know, the data you have. Um, and again, you know, uh, we have, we want feedback, right? And there are always um, several lenses to when we get feedback, but I, I think everybody in this body is always interested in, in keeping the public as safe as we possibly can, right? I know that's your priority and I know that's ours. Um, so I, I might, I suggest Maria, if I'm, if I'm within bounds here to have a, to have that meeting, I believe that will comply with FOIA or other requirements if, if it's set up that way. Is that correct? It is correct. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Whatever you require from us, we're happy to sit down and meet and discuss it for sure. Absolutely. Fair. And then again, um, so the the do you have May numbers at this point from a from a, a car 17 uh, basis or are you still compiling those? I do not, unfortunately, because it does take a bit of time to go through the dispatch data and I was not able to get um, May done at this point. Um, but as soon as I have them, I'm happy to forward it to the, the board so you can review them as well. Yeah, I think that that would be helpful as well. And then um, also we had talked about the, the quarterly update on the overall dashboard of responsiveness, you know, in terms of you mentioned that um, 17 staffed and or um, well staffed and on the road didn't it didn't necessarily impact mutual aid. So that analysis we had done a couple of months ago helped kind of articulate that. Right. So right. those ongoing numbers of these are the call volumes. These are the times of day. And again, I know it takes a bit of work, but. Um, you know, when the calls don't overlap, that's what you mean in terms of if there's one call and it's orderly, and then an hour and a half later, there is another call, our first ambulance can continue to respond, right? And the system is yes. very resilient in that space. When there are four calls and <laughs> 17 is not on, well, 17 would have helped with the second call, but the third and fourth call require mutual aid, no matter what the staffing level would have been, right? So, <laughs> You know, and, and again, I understand that. I think everybody on this this call understands that. But again, for the general public, obviously, it's a it's a confusing topic. And again, it's all timing, right? This this business of professional and public safety is all timing, and I know that that's um, that's challenging for folks at home to hear. But that is um, the system is built to be extremely resilient, and you all rely upon each other and other agencies. And I think it works nearly, you know, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time. And again, we, we, we certainly want to make it a hundred, but uh, you know, I think <laughs> in the business of public safety, that's not a reality because there's always something new, right. And you're always challenging yourself to plan and, and account for whatever could come next. So again, instead of, instead of going on uh, further this morning, I will open it up to questions of the other board members, but I suggest that we have a have an offline meeting and, and come back with a, a, a formal uh, report on some of the topics that have been raised, if that's all right. 
And absolutely, we've, we, I believe we've been um, nothing but transparent and I've spent a great deal of time analyzing the data and I would love it to be black and white. There's just no way for it to be black and white. So the best uh, we can do is just look at what in the past, whether if there is a pattern that shows up statistically that we can schedule and try to accommodate. Um, but there's also, there is a business side. And I'm not trying to be insensitive about it. Obviously, we want to be here for every resident of the town of Simsbury to accommodate what their needs are. Um, we also can't basically run the business and basically financially into the ground. We still have to be able to function and to provide the, the proper care and be able to pay our employees an adequate salary. So there is that part of it as well, which is not an issue for the public. It's something for me to deal with and for us to address on a, another level. Um, mm -hmm. But we have always been a very high um, professional service. We, we have people that work in our town that provide service to our residents that have a level that is beyond what a commercial service could ever provide. We actually know people. We've gone to them many times to their homes. We know where they live. We have been there for their other family members. They recognize our faces. We're in Fitzgerald's or walking around. There is that aspect that is not a, 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 not a monetary thing that you can ever put a value to. And when these people come, when people work for Simsbury Ambulance, they come in knowing that we expect them to go out on calls and to take the time and to deal with the patient and help them in their moment of crisis. It's very important for them to understand that they are cared for and that we are concerned about them and to get them to the hospital for def definitive care. That has always been our goal. What and it's that? always been my goal. And no. I'm, I'm, not, I'm sorry, uh, I'll stop no, no, no. now. I, I'm your, your passion is important, <laughs> right? You have a passion for public service. And, and again, it's obvious and we appreciate that. And that's, a, I think, a good quality in the executive director of our ambulance service. Um, you know, but again, it's it's how can we how can we partner with SVA? And again, yeah. if there is a financial gap, what is the gap? How long is it? Is it short term? Is it long term? Do we need to enter into a discussion with the town? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, because I, I believe our residents, as they've shown with the police department and, and with other public safety um, services, we are willing to pay for a higher level of service. We value public safety in this community. And when asked, the taxpayers and the voters respond to it and approve those those increases because they believe there's value. So I think, you know, continuing to have that discussion and put that story together, if, if money is the issue, we can all work together on that one. Um, you know, staffing is, is a different challenge, obviously, and I expect you and the board to manage that. And it sounds like you're looking mm -hmm. at that, you know, and then the other piece is the transparency piece. And I think it's important. I think you have been transparent with me. I think you have been transparent with this body and I appreciate that. Obviously we're continuing to evolve the standard metrics and data so that we can help educate the public. And you know, that meeting that I suggested, I think will further that. And on top of that, Maria, our town manager, right, has um, now become a, I, I believe a quarterly, uh, if not yes. twice a year member um, <laughs> of attending your board meetings, right? So there is increased transparency with the town. Um, and I think that's important. The reason Maria was asked um, is because she is the stable factor in, mm -hmm. in this business of, of town government in that it's not myself or Chris or the first select woman, uh, Max Dudas, because again, we can change every two years. Whereas the theory is obviously the town manager um, is, is a more stable position. So to have that continuity and that relationship, I think is, is mm -hmm. important, but also again, to have the town have a, a, at least a, a seat at the virtual table of, of, being at your meetings and making sure that, you know, our partnership is, is going um, in a forward direction. And I believe it is at this point. So um, with that, we'll, um, we'll entertain additional questions and then uh, Maria, we'll get that, we'll get that meeting scheduled. I know I can't, uh, I can't compel you to do that, but uh, we can, um, we can certainly suggest uh, that we, uh, we get that uh, set up. So. And Sean, just quickly, I'll just um, jump in in regards to the meetings. I do really want to thank um, the Ambulance Association for including me in their board meetings. And I did attend my first board meeting last month and just really um, want to say that you know, I thought Karen did an excellent job in terms of providing a really thorough um, you know, agenda, packet materials in advance, and the breadth and depth of topics that they covered were you know, exceptional, very appropriate for a board. Um, they had good attendance. The board members were very engaged. Um, so thank you very, very much for including me um, in that meeting. I really appreciated it and thought you all did the job well done. Hey, Sean. Sean, good to have you. Chris, Sean, yeah. uh, hey, good, good morning. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> beat a dead horse. No one's, questioned the, uh, no one's questioning the veracity, the intensity, and the intent and the commitment of the, 
the volunteers and the employees of Cinder Ambulance. Um, but as we blue sky, but something something with people in process is 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 not is not working, um, and and we're working and and, and I, I, the transparency and the openness and and uh, trying to move forward to to work collaboratively, help those people um, and help the organization deliver. Uh, on their commitment and their passion and their and their mission statement, we're all for that. And, and I, I appreciate you pushing the ideas of the of the conversations, and I, I support you. And um, hopefully, Marie, you guys can keep having these <clears throat> strategic meetings with them. A as an idea, we think about how to evolve the service level that is provided, because at this point, um, we need we need to put every kind of idea on the table uh, to ensure that whether I think that whether um, whether we can immediately answer with more bodies, we got to figure out how to encourage people to join the ranks of those volunteers to support folks moving forward. But to encourage at least now that we have first responders at some level with some additional level of, of medical training, I think it's something we should think about. And my idea would be to talk with the police department and to talk with uh, Chief Baldus and his team and figure out how we can continue to uptrain their staffs to ensure that in time, at any time, we have more bodies who are medically trained at the EMT level. It's mm -hmm. not gonna be able, to, that's not gonna help us with the staffing of an ambulance. But if we can bring to bear more trained people who potentially could be on scene, that's just getting lucky, but potentially be on scene to provide additional medical training. I think that's something we should, again, we should, we should think about that. So whether it's offering, so with the police, which, which we know is certainly that's a paid force, we have to work through that, but uh, encouraging folks in the police department to become fully medically trained at the EMT level um, and uh, renum yeah, remunerate them for that, uh, for that additional training sought, or with Chief Baldus's team and that organization, which has a much larger breadth of members, if we, did, we could encourage those folks with some type of incentive to get their certification, my goal and my hope is that at any one time, again, we can, we can increase the number of people who are volunteers in this town who may not be specifically attached with wearing a Simsbury Volunteer Ambulance Association patch on their arm. But if we get one more person on scene in an event that can provide medical care, I think that's a win in the long run. So how do we work with our other agencies to incentivize them to add that additional skill set to complement the Simsbury volunteer? That's the kind of thinking we got to get to. So I would encourage us to talk with those two organizations to figure out how we can make that work. I agree, Chris. I think that's a good suggestion. Other questions, comments from folks on the, the ambulance topic, topic? All right. Thank you all. Chief Baldus, fire. Actually, we're going to start off with uh, the fire marshal's report first. Patrick. Okay. Mr. Torvald. Patrick, you're muted. Thank you. I <laughs> uh, just wanted to say uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, also, uh, off of Karen's notes here, uh, the Goodrich building is almost completed. And yes, 55 units and 55 new residents of the town of Sinsbury will be moving in probably mid-July or in the month of July anyways. Um, so that'll be completing up very shortly. Uh, the other thing is we see fireworks have begun to make their way into some of our retail establishments in town. Uh, the fire marshal's office will be visiting those businesses to ensure compliance with the Connecticut statutes and regulations for both product compliance and code compliance for sales within their establishments. Um, we'll also be distributing uh, safety brochures throughout the community on firework safety and the use and hopefully they don't use them and hopefully they don't sell them and hopefully they go away. But Nonetheless, we have to address that hazard. As we know, uh, the last few years with COVID and everything else, people staying at home, the use of fireworks was extremely increased in the town. Um, also, the Sinsbury Fire District would like to thank the Social Services Department. Uh, we worked together to bring back our senior pancake breakfast, which used to be a great event and now is still a great event. A lot for good food conversation and the ability to deliver fire and life safety messaging on fire and fall prevention, as well as emergency preparedness to the residents. Uh, this is a great example on how we can reach the at-risk populations within the community 
by utilizing multiple agencies, much like uh, Chris just spoke of, you know, we can all work together to, to take different approaches. Um, also, just uh, make everyone aware that 2022 Fire Prevention Week thing was announced uh, just last week. Uh, fire won't wait. Plan your escape will be this year's theme. Uh, this uh, year celebrates 100 years that the NFPA has sponsored the public observance of Fire uh, Prevention Week. Uh, 1925, a little bit of history here. President Calvin Coolidge proclaimed Fire Prevention Week as a natural uh, na national observance, making the longest running public health observance in our country. And both the Sinsbury Volunteer Fire Company and the Sinsbury Fire District will promote this message throughout the year. Uh, last but not least, also, you, many of you may have heard we had an incident in Sinsbury where uh, four patrons of a bar on that road were um, injured during a campfire incident. Uh, we have reached out to the owner of the business and to the owner of the building and are working to ensure that safeguards <laughs> are in place if they choose to continue um, with that type of activity out in their outdoor venue. Um, so those meetings have taken place. Uh, they've taken uh, some of our recommendations into light, and hopefully they'll do that and take a, uh, take advantage of that. Other than that, that's all I have from the fire marshal's office. Just for my own uh, information, um, Mr. Trouble, is there any transferability to the police department on that matter? Uh, any... We worked with we worked with the police department, with the state police department on that matter for as far as um, the investigation purposes on that fire. Okay. All right. So they. Suffice it to say, the all of the appropriate authorities have been involved. So, Perfect. absolutely. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Any other questions for our fire marshal? Patrick, thank you. Nice work. All right, now Chief Baldus. Thanks very much. Uh, we were able to get through a, a pretty uh, quiet uh, spring dry season. As you know, we had uh, quite a period of time with the fire danger being very high. Uh, fortunately, uh, we did not experience uh, a high number of brush fires and, and things f stayed fairly quiet. Uh, timing was good as well because it did allow us to focus on uh, training on our new uh, apparatus that we received in March. So we were able to get those uh, on the line in full operation and uh, doing very well uh, with those two new pieces. Uh, we've been very active in supporting a number of uh, toucher truck type of activities that have been going on, uh, public works, and then we have another one coming up um, at Sinsbury Farms. Uh, we were also involved uh, supporting the uh, recent duck race at the uh, Flower Bridge, uh, which was quite successful. Uh, participated in the high school graduation ceremony, uh, which we're very pleased and honored to do by presenting the colors for that event. And we certainly will be supporting, as we have in the past, the uh, Talcum Mountain Music Festival's activities coming up in, in, uh, in July. Uh, we did have two incidences that I want to uh, briefly uh, review uh, with, with the public. Um, just something to be aware of. We had one, which is actually a situation to where we had an automobile that was left running in a garage overnight. Um, and while this could have been a very, very serious and actually deadly type of an experience, fortunately, the outcome was not that way. But what the circumstances were was a person who was unfamiliar with the new start, stop, push button automobile ignition system. Uh, the, the individual was not familiar with the vehicle, uh, pulled it into the garage and did not push the stop button. And because the vehicle was so quiet, didn't realize that the vehicle was still running, got out of the car, closed the garage door, went into the house. That vehicle ran from five o'clock that evening until five o'clock the next morning. And uh, obviously producing CO, the CO did infiltrate the house, fortunately not to a severe level, thank goodness. However, when, the, when it was discovered, the individual did experience uh, some dizziness when she went into uh, to actually turn the vehicle off uh, we had a uh, response from police, EMS, as well as the fire department. We were able to uh, clear the house. Uh, the individual was, uh, was observed by EMS and as a precaution taken to the hospital, but, 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 but was fine. But we just wanted to alert people to be very mindful, uh, especially with some of these new vehicles of the potential uh, that that is there to make sure that uh, you do have that. Uh, in this particular case, there was uh, no seal monitors that were in the house that alerted them, uh, and that may have been a, a big help. Uh, but uh, again, fortunately, the outcome on this was, was favorable. 
uh, but it certainly could have been a very, very serious, uh, serious problem. We just wanted to bring the public's uh, awareness to that. Uh, the other one that uh, we had, which was um, something that, that I think a lot of people are familiar with, but don't necessarily understand the potential, is the use of whole house fans. Um, many people have these whole house attic fans that are great. And New England is wonderful because it, you know, when, when the summertime cools off, you can start drawing in that cool air through your open windows using the whole house attic fan. What starts to happen is, is as when you start getting chilly, what do you do? You start closing windows. And when you do that, that whole house fan is still trying to pull air from somewhere. And in many cases can start pulling air in through your chimney and through your furnaces. And what happens is, again, you have the potential for CO infiltration to come into your basement areas and ultimately into your home because that's being forced and traveled up through the house itself. And so there again, the potential for a CO incident uh, can certainly occur. So we encourage people who do have these whole house attic fans to understand that it does need to have open windows and not just one in order for those fans to work effectively. And as you start to start closing windows, you may wanna consider starting to shut off that fan so you don't have the potential for that kind of infiltration. And again, we did have an incident, uh, fortunately not anything that was serious in regards to an effect on the occupants, but because of a working carbon monoxide detector that was in the home, it alerted the family of the incident and of the problem. We were able to go monitor, ventilate the house. And again, the outcome was very favorable. But again, just to uh, make the public aware of, of these incidences. And as was mentioned, I think in Mike's report, uh, you know, we have our upcoming storm season coming, generators get used and please, please, please make sure you run those generators outdoors. Do not run them in your garage. Uh, even though you may you know, not want to get wet per se, but they are designed to be, uh, to be run outdoors and never in a garage environment. So that's what we have uh, today. And I'd like to now turn it over to Gary Wilcox, the president of the fire district. All right, Chief, thank you. Gary? All right, <clears throat> thank you, good morning. Uh, I just wanted to report on, at, uh, at our annual May meeting, we passed our annual budget and we were able to do that while holding our mill rate steady at 1.22. And that was, even though the, the budget did increase slightly, that uh, the increase that the town ha had in the grand list was en enabled us to keep that rate at 1.22. The other thing that does factor into that is with the, with the legislature's um, cap on the mill rate, that our, our car tax though will be 0.97 with the understanding from the town that they will reimburse the difference on that. So, so that's, the, that's the, the scoop on the budget. Also at the annual meeting, our, our vice president, Dan Coppinger and our treasurer, Peter Pabich were reelected for an, an, another two year term on that there. So we're keeping our team intact and together and, and we've got a, got a great team on that. From the district side, I would also like to add congratulations to Mike Berry on his, on his reappointment. Mike has been a, um, a very, very huge asset, as, as everyone knows and have stated before. And, and both, we're, we're lucky to have both Mike and Jim uh, together, and they're, they're working very well. And on that line is that if you, you recall a number of years ago when we had, when, when Mickey LaCour's Beck retired, and after being a member of, of public safety for, for quite a number of years, we did a, we did a, uh, a, a breakfast meeting for her at the firehouse. And we had had intentions of doing the same with Kevin when he retired, but COVID has gotten in the way and COVID has continued to stay in the way. And we're still, we're still Zooming our, our public safety meeting. So I'd like to throw it out there that that we didn't, we didn't forget getting together and, and having the, the public safety folks congratulate Kevin on his long tenure of, of emergency management. But if, if at some point in the, in the near future, when, when the new normal allows it, we'd like to have a public safety meeting at seven o'clock with coffee, with donuts, well, we can negotiate the seven o'clock price uh, time. That sounds good to me, Gary. Let's, you know how I feel. All right. Thank you. 
I appreciate that. Yeah, I feel like we're uh, we're going to say goodbye to Kevin for at least a half a decade here. So, uh, but uh, he certainly he certainly deserves it. And I uh, I do like the sound of the seven a.m. meeting. Uh, although I know some of my colleagues uh, don't enjoy that time as much. Appreciate the fire update. Uh, we're gonna go we're gonna go rapid fire uh, for the rest of the agenda here. I apologize, um, Neil. Happy last day of school. Uh, Thank you. Congratulations on surviving another year, and and not only surviving but doing an outstanding job. I uh, really appreciate you, what you and the, the team do to, to keep our kids safe and, and obviously educate them. So thank you. And the floor is yours. Well, it looks like we're going to make it as long as the next few hours go okay. Um, and uh, have had um, our year end events and celebrations um, pulled off for the most part. So I want to thank the chief mentioned graduation, but, you know, our other events and all the agencies on here that help support uh, our year-end celebration. So thank you to that. The quick COVID update is um, that we, we, having reached year end here, we were doing some quick math over the last few days. And because we actually continued to take reporting after most people, you know, at the, at the uh, state level, they talk about how they're missing cases because most people are with the test kits now. But because we continued to take in um, case reporting through the test kit era over the second half of the year, we think we actually have a pretty good data set. So if you um, do the rough math of how many cases and divide it by how many kids, or do it with staff, how many staff, how many cases with staff and divide by, by overall. Um, it's basically three out of every eight people in our school district had a case somewhere between September of 2021 and June of 2022. So I don't know if that's a fun fact, but it's a COVID fact in, um, in terms of, um, you know, if you, think a little less than half, three out of eight people um, reported a case to us over the course of the year. I can report that the test kit system uh, worked beautifully. I at one point I was very concerned that there was gonna be a lot of wasted test kits that proved not to be the case. Um, and our school nurses are actually not holding on to very many at all at this point. Most, all of them ended up being um, distributed before the school year um, wrapped up, which is which is a good thing. Um, on the non-COVID front, our summer building projects um, will continue. Um, and on the safety front, I know I've reported to this group, one of our main goals in terms of building hardening, if you will, was to create the double entry lock system to each building. And we've plugged away at that over many years. And um, this summer, actually the trickiest one um, is our smallest school, Terraville School, with the way that entrance is shaped. But we are gonna be getting to that one this summer. And then that, um, uh, and then the Latimer one will get done over the course of that major construction project at Latimer. So we should be wrapping up um, with all of our schools then having a double entry system to um, be able to enter the building. Uh, and then lastly, I'll just report for the planning for the future. Our director of safety and security, Mark Kritz, is um, planning an exercise for the fall. We have drilled our um, reunification plans before. The majority of our reunification plans call if a school needs to be evacuated and brought somewhere else that it co would come to Simsbury High School. But if something happened at Simsbury High School, the plan is it would, uh, reunification would take place at Henry James. So we have never drilled that part. We have never done it if the high school had to evacuate to Henry James and we needed to reunify. So it's gonna be sometime in September or October that we carry out that exercise um, led by Mark Kretz. So some other agencies here um, have been informed about that and may be observing that day. We hope they can, um, and we'll see what we learn from the exercise. So 
Um, after noon today, our kids are going to be out there for summer. So please keep an eye out for, on the roads with more activity of kids out in uh, out in town. And uh, I hope everyone. I'm going to have to jump off after my report. So I hope everyone has a great summer. Neil, thank you, and appreciate uh, all you and the team do to keep our kids safe and, and educated, as we talked about. So thank you. Have a great summer. I know you'll you'll still be working. Yeah, <laughs> work is never done for you. So all right, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Roy, Public Works. Uh, thank you, Sean, and good morning, everybody. Um, real quick, I just to follow up on Chris Peterson's comment about additional um, staff and training. A few years back, we took it upon ourselves that all Public Works employees have um, medical training, including CPR, AED, and an, an advanced stop the bleed training, which would be like application of tourniquets and some of the severe wounds. And that was done in part to the work they do in case they're injured on the job, but also so often during a severe weather event, our drivers or our employees may be the first on scene. So it, it's something that we're doing to help where we can to provide additional safety to the town. Uh, as Chief Baldus mentioned, we had a um, very successful uh, open house and touch a truck event in May out at Public Works. It was the first time we invited the public into our facility. Um, it was really nice to see some of the reactions and let people understand what we do that they may not see and also to understand how we're trying to utilize their tax dollars efficiently. Uh, over the next couple of weeks, one of the focuses we're gonna have in terms of uh, safety is really keeping an eye on sight lines. Right now with the way the uh, weather pattern has been, vegetation is blooming. And I would just say that if any residents have concerns about sight lines, if they contact the public works office, we'll send out crews to address those as soon as we can. That pretty much covers it. Thank you, Tom, appreciate that. Um, all right, Kristen is on vacation. We will move to uh, Nancy uh, for VNA. Good morning. Um, business is busy. I'm never sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, won't say a whole lot from the VNA other than to just um, just to update people and to warn them. You know, we were concerned at one point that a lot of our COVID testing kits. You know, we had quite a supply, luckily, uh, due to support from everybody around um, that, you know, we we're going to have all these test kits that were going to expire. We're going to have to throw them out. Um, please be sure that you don't just throw things away. Uh, we have found when you open them up that a lot of times the supplies inside the kit have a different expiration date than the outside of the box, um, which uh, go figure. Um, so they may actually have an extended date beyond what you think they are. So don't throw them out. Um, just check a case before you toss them, open them up and take a look, see. Um, but uh, we're doing really well. And, and just to Karen's point earlier, you know, one of the beauties of working in this community um, with ambulance, with the town, uh, with pol um, police, with fire, you know, people like ambulance crew, they develop relationships with uh, frequent flyers with the community, with patients, with, they know people. And, um, you know, when they get a call from somebody, they have a relationship with them and they kind of know how to talk them down and they know how to have that conversation. And that's kind of the beauty of where we live. Um, and you can't underestimate the value of that. And, um, and I fully appreciate that because half the time we get involved with somebody, it's because police or fire or ambulance knew something wasn't right in the community and they called the town and the town called us and they had the relationship with the person. And um, and you just can't underestimate the value of that. Um, and it's because we live where we do. And, and I fully appreciate that. So um, congratulations on their 65 years. I'm really glad that they're one of our partners. Nancy, I appreciate that. That's good perspective. All right, uh, Sarah, the re-accredited Main Street partnership. Congratulations and welcome. Thank you. I'm going to be very quick. Um, we are working with the Performing Arts Center and the town of Simsbury on um, trying to figure out how to minimize business interruptions and also increase safety for the business and everybody that goes to the events at the Performing Arts Center. I want to thank uh, the first elect woman um, for you know, stepping in a little bit. And it looks like uh, the Performing Arts Center and some of the businesses affected will be having a meeting shortly. Um, sure. Outdoor dining is going well. Again, I wanna thank the committee, which is Patrick Torville, Henry Miga, Laura Barkowski, and Jason Brown from the Health District. They've been a fantastic team throughout for this last couple of years um, and have done a phenomenal job. 
Um, we let the police chief know, and just a reminder to the businesses, we've had some Fuse credit card app issues. Uh, Fuse is a legitimate app. It is a legitimate credit card app, um, but some people have been um, hacking into it. And you know, when somebody goes to scan it at one of the local stores, it says an error code and then they put it in by hand. Oh. And when you do that, it puts all of the um, liability on the businesses. So we let them know it's been popping up in areas very close to Simsbury. And so uh, we've let the businesses and the chief know to just look out for that um, and just monitor that. Um, and then just a quick thing, we um, did cell phone updates uh, at the last board of selectmen meeting um, at the request of the first select woman. Um, yeah. Our committee will be reconvening shortly, um, but we have been slowly making progress. It is slowly, we're still working on it. And I'm actually waiting to hear back um, sometime this week on some updates on uh, what Verizon is doing. So that's it. Sarah, thank you. And thank you for your continued work on particularly the cell phone um, issue, because obviously that's a, an important public safety issue that you and others have raised here for a long time. So not only raising it, but getting it over the finish line is, as you've done on a number of steps is really important. So thank you. Well, and I just want to thank, it's really been Chief Baldis, yep. Mike Berry, Jim Traficante, and Chief Bolter. So uh, fantastic team. And I thank them. Absolutely. All right. Last but never least, Mark Massaro. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. I'll be very brief. Uh, I know we're kind of running into beyond the nine o'clock hour. So, or yeah, nine o'clock. Um, uh, if any any residents or, or business customers in town are still looking for help with with uh, you know be uh, billing or special programs, please just contact our customer care center at one 286 two eight six two thousand. There are many programs um, with energy with energy costs increasing again in uh, July. Um, you'll you'll be looking for uh, <clears throat> possibly looking for additional assistance or programs. So, so please call our customer care center and they'll direct you based on uh, what you're, what you're looking for help with. Um, in terms of emergency preparedness, we're, we'll be, uh, I know the state ran their uh, exercise a few weeks back. We'll be running our own internal exercise next Thursday, actually Wednesday and Thursday, but on Thursday is a full group of our uh, liaison program. We'll be running part of that exercise internally as well in preparation for uh, any summer storm season that hopefully we don't bear too much of uh, here. Um, and, and Chief Baldus, I'm sure you'll be happy to hear that as well. Um, but we will be doing that exercise uh, internally next week and preparing our staff, especially our li liaison organization to be ready to go in case that comes, comes to fruition. That's it, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for your consistent partnership. It's really important that we have your, your continued representation, not only here at this meeting, but with, with all the chiefs and, and, and folks on this call, because it's really important. And the consistency, you've been you know, with us for a long time now, so I think that's really important. And uh, we appreciate what you do. We appreciate you having me. Thank you. Of course. All right. Uh, quick wrap up items. Uh, the first select woman next to this reminded me that, that there is, um, let me make sure I get it right, Project uh, Child Safe, which is a new gun lock program that I believe that is partnering with the police department. So uh, there's going to be more information out there. And, and uh, first select woman Max Sudis has put that out there as part of her first uh, select woman's report. So please, uh, we all uh, encourage safe gun ownership in this community. So uh, important to, to utilize that service. If you have questions, go ahead and contact the police department. Um, and then also uh, important, you all connect with different 501c3s. Some of you are 501c3s on this call. Um, we are uh, finishing uh, through our ARPA work group, our finance work group led by the first select woman, uh, the nonprofit program. Uh, we anticipate it will be approved uh, in, in fully, uh, I believe in July. Uh, 